Hello Milan, welcome to this year's Teddy Awards interview. It's just a few days until the Berlinale starts. How are you doing? How is the atmosphere at the Panorama office? Well, we're polishing details. That's what we're doing the last days before it starts. It sort of feels like it already has started because the first guests are coming in at the same time we say, we're not open yet, but great that you're here. So it's that kind of situation where we switch from straight work, like Maulwurf, what's that in English, uh, molds, uh, to, to, to the work, to the outside world. So we're switching right now. Mm -hmm. um, you already had the presentation at the Kina International where you present the movies. How was it? Well, I give a overview over the queer program of the festival as much as I know. And the colleagues of the other sections give us their tips. Also, one uh, colleague from Generation was visiting and, and talking about the films that he, he's showing. And then we also watch uh, little pieces of films, just to tease the audience and to give them a taste. Because, of course, we show far too many films, also too many queer films for one person to, to, to see everything. So we try to like give them a sort of a hint how to navigate through this festival with more than 400 films. Hmm. Well, um, we would also like to get those hints, so um, could you give us an introduction to this year's movies which are competing for a Teddy Award? Like well, there's, um, there, of course, there's the so-called queer list for the queer programmers, mm -hmm. uh, because there are more than 100 queer programmers from all over the world are coming, and of this group, of course, we also extract the Teddy jury of nine people. And uh, the films that they have to see are less than the entire amount of queer films in the festival because they cannot watch everything. No jury can see like 45 films. Uh, so we uh, tone it down to uh, a, a number of films that they can manage. I would say something like 28 or so. I don't know exact number of this year. And uh, if I tell you about the films, of course, they might be in the Teddy Run or not. Uh, but the program opens with a Vietnamese film, uh, which is uh, the alternative opening to the competition opening on the same day, same time, uh, which is not a queer film, but uh, just to give you a feeling of what we're doing. It's not a queer program that we're doing. It's a program that has a focus on queer filmmaking every year. It's a constant focus that we have from, from year one, which was 1980. And that has uh, made us the program of a non-queer film festival with the most uh, queer films showing. So it has its own view in that respect. We discuss every film and uh, we have a lot of also buyers who are explicitly looking for a queer film uh, in our program. But uh, also because the Teddy Award was created in the section Panorama for all the films that are also in other sections of the festival. The other programmers now are also uh, trying to compete, which is a nice thing because the success of us is not just uh, having a good festival, but that it will work in, in, in conjunction with other programs and also other festivals because the Teddy now also exists uh, sort of a, uh, the same idea, at least uh, with a different name in, in Cannes and in Venice and other festivals are following. The first one was actually in Kiev, of all places, and that's already long ago. The film is called Funny Bunny, or Sunny Bunny, something like this, and um, was the excuse to be able to show queer film at a time when that was totally not expected and not wanted. Uh, and uh, actually, you have to say, it's still not uh, expected and wanted in Kiev. But the festival makers there, not of a queer film festival, have taken that award and strengthened their queer side in their programming. So this is another angle of what our programming is doing. And of course we are helping queer film festivals to, especially in places where it's difficult, like St. Petersburg, like in Sarajevo right now, we had a big uh, mess again. Uh, the people that tried to make the festival got, uh, uh, were attacked. And that happened already a couple of years ago, that they really stopped trying to make a queer film festival in Sarajevo, a city that knows so much about violence that you're really astonished that they didn't learn anything out of their, from their history. And also the big festival there doesn't do anything 
And it's a big festival that has learned a lot from our festival. And it's, uh, it sees itself as like a, a, a matchmaking uh, a festival to, to the Berlinale at the same time when the queer festival makers there are in trouble, they do nothing. So we have a lot of diplomatic work and political diplomatic work to do. And uh, the films that we show here are the fundament for this work. So when you want to know anything about the specific titles, all these things that I just said swing with the motivation to show a film, even if it's a film that is just there to enjoy, like Yves Saint Laurent, which is a bio picture on the, uh, one of the geniuses of fashion. This, is, this doesn't look political, it's not political, maybe it is political, it's definitely a crazy story of a crazy time, the 70s, the 60s, and uh, fantastic actors are playing. It's a French film. The French really do know well how to do bio pictures. It's, it doesn't have that typical American feel. It doesn't have the dry, woody German style. It is just much more elegant and much more also charming. So um, I'm very happy to open the festival uh, this year, Panorama Special, with this film, followed as the second opening film by Ira Sachs's Love is Strange. Teddy winner of two years ago with Keep the Lights On. He gives us a story from the, one of the most developed, most emancipated uh, societies that we know, which is the US and some Western European countries. In the US now, we have a New York couple. They lived together for some 40 years. And uh, finally, New York has arrived. Uh, gay people can marry, queer people can marry. So they marry. Uh, the older of the two is already in pension and the younger is uh, conducting a choir in a church and they marry and the, f the family and the neighbors and the friends are all celebrating this queer marriage and uh, with this action which is legal the church realizes now this uh, their choir conductor is out and uh, he gets fired and um, by him getting fired, they lose the means to maintain the apartment in which they live for decades now. And they have to leave their apartment. And uh, they have to move in with their friends. But in New York, it's not in, like in Berlin, where you have big apartments, they have all very small apartments. So they cannot take over a couple in their family lives. So the two gentlemen get split up uh, after more than 40 years because they married legally. It's like a very <laughs> fine way of describing the, the many traps that are on the way to emancipation. Well, this is the high end of emancipation, but we also have the low end of emancipation. Uh, let's say when you look at India, for example, with a film called Papilio Buddha, a film that is also not only addressing queer issues, but also addressing the caste system of society. It's actually working against the caste systems. The filmmaker wants to create a queer caste. That means you can go into that queer caste. You don't have to be born. Wherever you're born, you can go into this queer caste, which means, of course, the dissolving of all caste systems, because that is how you're born. And um, they also explain that all the rapes that we had knowledge of in the news over the past months in Western Europe, um, those rapes where people, women were killed by uh, group rapes, um, are part of a systematic uh, structure in society. It's always the higher castes that rape the lower castes, and it's uh, part of it uh, to keep the caste system in control because you, from the lower caste you cannot do anything against it. And we have a, another Indian film, we have two Indian films, that uh, deals with a uh, hijacking of a person, of a young woman, uh, by accident. And she's from a higher caste, and, she's, uh, and now the lower caste is in trouble because they hijacked, they actually stole an Audi car. And the woman was attached to the car, so all of a sudden they're there with this woman and they don't know what to do. Um, because the caste system doesn't allow this kind of uh, dealing. So that's quite interesting to learn something about India because India is coming uh, forcefully onto the world, uh, into the awareness in the world. 
and uh, filmmakers start to look out of their culture. And uh, well, you know how many people live in India, then you know how many queer people uh, live in India. And this is a vast uh, group of um, population. So there's a long way to go until that uh, becomes something emancipated. Eastern Europe, another child of sorrow in that respect, comes from Hungary, a film about a soccer player. Gay soccer player, but he doesn't, he's not out yet. So he plays in Germany, he's in a German club. And uh, the training is quite machismo driven and he doesn't like that very much. And he thinks maybe he should just like change his mind and uh, do something else. And he decides to go back to Hungary into the old farmhouse of his grandfather who doesn't live anymore. The house is also not in a good shape. Uh, when it rains, it drips through the floors. Um, and he wants to um, deal with bees to, to like, uh, I don't know how you say that in English, to have peace, and, uh, which we know are in trouble anyway. So uh, from the village, he gets to know a few young guys who sort of like attack him in a way, but he befriends one of them and it becomes a love story on the Pusta and uh, could have been a happy time. It was a happy time, but uh, also a lot of trouble waiting around the corner. Wonderful film called Land of Storms. Aber ich kann dir nicht jeden Film erzählen. Das, ist, das geht Stunden, Stunden, Stunden. No, but it would be nice if you could just point out some highlights of this year's Teddy program. Okay, these were, these, these were highlights, definitely. Okay. But of course we have more highlights. What about you... some highlights from um, East Asia? You mentioned those Very before. Very good. Well, East Asia, uh, or also mainland China, are here with queer films. From, from uh, South Korea we have Lee Song Hee Il for the third time in the program. And he's one of the smartest uh, queer filmmakers that we see in that part of the world. Um, Night Flight is the title. And uh, last time he showed a revenge story where a gay young man was fighting back against the trauma he got when he was um, uh, attacked in an anti-gay riot. And uh, this time it is more a kind of a coming out story, but it's not really coming out story. It's more complex than that. And, and a friend from youth changes also in the school system. It's also about the society and the school system in their country that is totally driven by the need to succeed. Um, Leistungsdruck, as we say in German, um, stronger than we can imagine. It's like very driven. You have to be successful, otherwise you're nothing. That kind of attitude. And that, of course, is, is, is a burden for young people. And then when you're gay, it, it tops it. And uh, the other guy is like not uh, dealing with the issues at all. He's becoming um, a guy who's like mobbing uh, the other kids. And uh, how this clearly gay-minded, emancipatory-minded young man starts to deal with this macho guy is the story of the film. Um, then there's an incredible surprise from mainland China, a young filmmaker, 21 years old, made a film with his friends. He's also playing the lead. It's a story of a male and a female prostitute who become friends. And uh, it's done in a way that is stylistically mind-blowing. Very beautiful for nothing, 3 mark 50 as we say. Uh, you make a beautiful film in a country where homosexuality is not a theme that you actually can deal with openly. So um, wonders are happening and this is one of them. Um, are there also some lesbian themed movies? You mainly pointed out gay themed movies so far. Um, are there any in the program, any highlights on that topic? Lesbians, last year was a year with more lesbian films than gay men, uh, which is rare. Very rare. We were very proud last year. Uh, we don't have that this year. We have um, one film that I want to point out. It's um, as sensitive to deal with as with any personal 
uh, approach to sexuality. It's the discovery of, a, of an artist who was not discovered as an artist as long as she lived. The film is called Finding Vivian Maya. And uh, Vivian Maya was a, a nurse uh, for children in rich households. And what she really did was taking photographs. And she made lots of photographs and led, led a solitary life. And in the film, uh, we discover this huge carton with undeveloped film and negatives. And the guy who, um, in an auction, got hold of this carton, opens it and uh, finally realizes, wow, there is an artist and now we can see the pictures. And he developed the undeveloped ones and um, printed the, the negatives. And we discover a character that cannot, of course, comment on me seeing a lesbian sister in this woman. But uh, that is definitely a film to discover. And it also tells us something about the hidden character of being a homosexual, depending on the time especially, and uh, not only the time, but also the country and the time. Um, so we have two films that look into the past, along with finding Vivian Meyer. The one is Der Kreis, The Circle, from Switzerland. We go into the 30s, 40s, 50s in Switzerland and discover how queer people lived there at that time, because Germany was still under Nazi time, of course, and after Nazi time, the Nazi law was still valid in West Germany until 1969. So it was not a happy time for gay people at all. When the Nazi time was over, for them, it just continued. Um, so it was a difficult situation to create something, a political um, up, upheaval, because people went whether back into prison or stayed in prison. A scandal, if you think of it today, and there was no compensation yet from the German state uh, towards this situation. Uh, but in Switzerland, they didn't have this paragraph, and they developed this magazine called Der Kreis, the Circle. But also, the Circle, which is of course a closed system, uh, was um, uh, they, they made uh, huge parties. So people from all over the world and, of course, from Germany went there to, to party and to have like a gay lifestyle for, for like a couple of days before they have to go back to wherever they came from. And uh, that's, that's a very interesting um, story because you also have the people from back then as old people witnessing in the film. And, uh, uh, and, and you have um, playful scenes, uh, fictional scenes in the film of, of the time reenactments. And the other film is um, from, from Italy. Uh, Gianni Amelio, who's a famous actor, of course, in Italy, uh, basically came out with this film that he made on the, on the history of queers in Italy. Going back, the Happy to be Different is the English title. And uh, that's another, another view back into history to see where we come from in order to know where we are, because we don't really know where we are if you don't know where we come from, and not to mention where to go to. And since the problems in every society for homosexual people are the same, you have to look on which level the certain societies are in emancipation. And you can follow that level. You see it in another country oh, that was like 20 years ago. In this country, it was the same level. Or maybe in 20 years, it will be on that level. So that's quite interesting because the cultural differences are much smaller than we usually talk. It is rather so that the cultural differences are very minimal. And the emancipatory status in the time frame are different. And that you can see when you watch the Italian, the Swedish and uh, Finding Vivian Meyer. And uh, that is, I think, something that we are, uh, should really be interested in to discover. Okay. Another look back is the dog. Dog Day Afternoon. Of course, we know the original film, but now we get to know the man who actually is the dog. And it's an amazing portrait of a gay man, uh, which doesn't fit any cliché that we know, up to the point that, of course, he became a bank robber in order to get uh, the money because he was uh, living a poor lifestyle. 
uh, to get the money to finance the sex change of his boyfriend who wanted a sex change. So like the gay man has a gay boyfriend who gets a sex change, then it's, you know, like he basically also fucks up the gay relationship in a way. But the love is so strong that it overburdens all the other decisions and this wish of his boyfriend is so strong that uh, he does this bank robbery, which of course Al Pacino played in the, in the famous film. Uh, another very different look back and also a different look back in terms of not only literary and intellectual and artistic people that uh, pop up in history, but also proletarian people that have a different approach to the whole culture, but uh, nevertheless uh, have the same force in, in the wish to be free and to emancipate. Are there any movies with a trans and or an intersexual theme this year? Well, one is of course the dog, um, because there we have this uh, transformation. Because we are also talking, of course, to the boyfriend or to who became a girlfriend. Um, but there's also the film, the fucking different X X Y. Uh, Fucking Different is a series of films and uh, that started out a German producer, Christian Pedersen, um, brought together uh, gays and lesbians. The idea is why would gays and lesbians work together? Gay men don't really need lesbians and lesbians don't really need gay men, so why would they work together? So the suppression of homosexuality brings them together. That means the definition comes from the outside. So uh, these thoughts, of course, are interesting to, to, to observe. And uh, his idea was to ask uh, gay filmmakers to make films about whatever they think lesbian sexuality could look like on film and vice versa. And so we had like several films also themed in different uh, several cities. Rio was there and uh, Tel, Aviv. Tel Aviv and Berlin, of course, and New York. And in this film, he has people from various cities in one film, and it's trans directors who are um, dealing with sexualities that are not their own. So it's a very playful and interesting exploration into sexual worlds. And um, there's more than that. What else do we have? Um, um, I was thinking of Quick Change. Quick Change, of course, which uh, definitely should be seen by anyone who thinks that beauty could be something artificially achieved. Um, it's a Filipino film. We have two Filipino films. Interesting enough, the one is a gay story of boys and the other one is a trans story. But we know that this culture is very open to the non, as the Russians would say, traditional sexualities, which is like the most absurd term that is possibly uh, to be used in that context. Um, quick Change is showing us the business model of two trans friends and they are going around and uh, injecting material into lips, into hips, into bosoms and butts in order to make those girls more beautiful, to make those trans girls more beautiful, because the beauty pageant is like a, a very strong element in that society. They, they have like big parties with a many, very popular thing as well. And you can make a career by becoming a beauty queen for a while. So um, beauty or nothing becomes a terrible advice uh, because the material they are injecting is not the right stuff. And uh, we see quite a mor moral, um, moral problem that uh, everybody gets into just by trying to be more beautiful than the other, uh, which is of course uh, something to think about uh, for every society. It's not just a Filipino um, effect. Yeah, so uh, the trans are more present than the lesbians this year, interesting enough, but uh, good. You were already talking about the look back in certain movies. Um, would you say that that is one of the themes that you see in the movies this year? And what are some other themes, than, like general themes in the movies? Can you make some out or would you say it's so diverse that you don't have any themes? 
really? Yeah, it's not really themes, but uh, we have lots of young people um, in in all uh, contexts, by the way, not only on the on the queer level. Uh, so um, young people and their ideas, how to deal with the world that um, and to deal with the imprints that they got from the world and to become like more earlier and earlier as an adult, for example. Uh, these are issues and uh, we have a film from Brazil where a young boy who's blind uh, in, in the puberty time uh, phase uh, discovers what he wants and what he likes. Um, beautiful film with the title The Way He Looks and uh, yeah, other other young people who are like not really coming out story. This is not the classical coming out story anymore. The problem of homosexuality is not so much focused on the main character of the film. It's rather the world that is described by one person being homosexual. So it's 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 actually nice to see that this uh, sort of has changed from the burdened young homosexual to someone who like confronts the world in a much more open way and that I think is also good for, for, the, for the spectators. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the queer movies are particularly political? Well, as long as queer people are suppressed, every queer film, even the one that is, uh, looks like just entertainment, has a political impact, that's, that's for sure. But uh, um, nevertheless, it depends in, in worlds where you have to fight for something still. Uh, of course, the films have a stronger uh, political assignment. But was a, what I already said about Ira Sachs' film from New York, all of a sudden you still have to fight, uh, even though everything looks like in a much better shape than before. So this probably never ends, I guess. The, the soccer player in... In Hungary, the, the boy in the Philippine film, Unfriend, Night Flight from Korea. It's, it's lots of films and everywhere someone has to make a stand in life. And uh, well, I guess this is also a very cinematic, graphical theme as such. So you would say that the film festival here is also a platform for the emancipation of queer people? Oh, well, that it always was. I mean, that, that is not even a question and this is not even news. Um, from the beginning of our programming, we also were attacked for, for, for having too many uh, queer films or whatever, you know. So uh, this is always a thing why we always uh, also developed the Teddy Award um, in a time when we understood about AIDS more. It was um, the first Teddy year was 87. So we're having the 28th Teddy this year. Um, and we're having a film from the US called Test, uh, exactly set in that time when I had the idea we need an award for a queer film, because first in the mid-80s the films got uh, uh, better in the sense of cinema uh, and more, and uh, at the same time AIDS uh, emerging um, also created new filmmakers that said we have to do something. So there were also films that were like fight films, we called them back then, that are really dealing with the issues and the upheavals uh, of, of the community, the community that was just like um, a consuming mob became politicized again uh, from the mid-80s on, so that was uh, also an important um, Part. I mean, I, I started to, 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 to be into film like in the late 60s, early 70s, when uh, the film Not the Homosexual is Perverse, but the Situation in which he lives by Rosa von Braunheim made a big change in Germany. Uh, the society has changed because of a film. And of course, people started to, to, to form groups and uh, go on the streets and demonstrate. Um, but that, um, that moment of um, bringing strength to a political idea with film was inherited very, from very early on uh, in my life. So I always uh, work um, with, the, with that view on film. Uh, Rosa von Braunheim will, Braunheim will get the, the, the Special Teddy Award this year 
for his life work. He made like numerous films. I don't know how many. It's like far more than a hundred. And uh, all of his films are uh, revealing uh, humane condition in the context of homosexuality. And um, the other honorary guest at the Teddy, who will also get a special Teddy Award for her lifetime work, is Elfie Mikesh, camera woman who inspired generations of camera women today in Germany and beyond. And uh, she's also a filmmaker. She's, uh, she has like many levels in her work. She worked with Rosa von Braunen, with Werner Schröter, who also got a teddy a couple of years ago, who uh, died in the meantime. Um, so we have like uh, two Germans getting uh, the special teddy. We never had that before. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to that. That's going to happen at the Teddy Gala. And well, I hope to see you there. Thank you very much for the interview and um, have fun at the Berlinale. You too. Thanks. <laughs>